Hello and welcome to another endgame build highlight. Today we're gonna check out the Alagas the Mage Hunter. And the Alagas Mage Hunter is one of few hybrid damage builds that you can play in this game that are actually viable for all endgame content too. So we are playing the Alagas set, set right? Like four piece Alagas set. We're playing the well Ravagers, the Red Gates here in this case. You can kinda like play whatever you want instead of this. There are many other like options you can have here. Um, but I think like ultimately for this build, the, the Ravagers, the Red Gaze should be the best. Um, especially the one that gives you like additional percent HP because health is something that this build can struggle a little bit with. So depending on your affixes and your other like gear pieces, the Ravagers Dread Gaze with the HP, like the percent HP bonus on top from the Ravager of Flesh is gonna be like very helpful for this build. Um, this also has a cooldown reduction, which is also nice because not every herald has cooldown reduction. And this build is basically a cooldown reduction build overall, because you are using Trolls Sky Shard and the well Stormbox of Algoroth as your main damage abilities. Now the set converts all the cold damage from Trolls and Sky Shard to Aether damage, so you're basically like Aether Lightning hybrid. And the Stormbox also has a transmitter and tree which converts the lighting damage of the base box to Aether, which does not affect any electrocute damage, and it also does not affect the tether. So these are still dealing like lightning and electrocute damage. So again, here you're playing like basically hybrid. Let's check out the remaining gear. So I'm playing the 80 ball pennant amulet here because obviously, as you can see, this is insane for like any stormbox build and any like Aether lightning hybrid build as well, right? You have percent damage to both the damage types and resist reduction to both the damage types on your stormbox, and you get like bonuses to all the like inquisitor points as well as like stormbox in particular. So very very nice uh, item here. Then we have the Rilarathus Tome. This one is very hard to get with like hybrid lightning Aether affixes. So I just went for like lightning affixes because those are easier to get on this item. I'm using a Thunderstruck of Thunder, which is obviously like Thunder, like lightning damage prefix, lightning damage suffix. You have some core damage from the base item, but it's like not a big deal, to be honest. It's like, okay. Um, this is insane because it does give you like that minus area on Trolls and Sky Shard, which means that like your Trolls and Sky Shards are easier, or, like more likely to shotgun an enemy, right? Like usually you have a way higher spread, right? If I remove this one, like the spread is way bigger, right? You can see this right here. Um, but if you equip the item, it's like contracting that area and thus you're like way more likely to like hit an enemy that's like like a single enemy especially that this will boost your single target damage by quite a lot also of course the queen reduction is nice for like like well both single target as well as aoe damage and it also gives you like plus two bonuses to um like our sense here which is actually the exclusive that we're gonna use here but more on that later i'm using craft gloves in this case i'm using tempest of celerity which do not have aether damage so ideally you would like to have something like of aether storms i think the suffix is called which gives you like lightning and aether damage but yeah i settled for tempest because tempest has percent offensive ability which is also pretty nice and well celerity has casting speed which is also very nice for a caster obviously um, for the boots, I'm using the Boots of Primordial Rage. These have Aether damage and Elemental damage, so like Aether and Lightning damage, and Physical Resistance and Defensive Ability. So these are like pretty much more or less the only one you can use here that's like actually good for this build. Um, even though you don't get like any skill bonuses, but you don't really need them either in this case. For the metal, I'm using the Gildim Arcanum Commendation, which has Aether and Elemental damage. So again, catering to like our hybrid playstyle, and also gives you bonuses to the Stormbox as well as the Wood of Pain line. Uh, Wood of Pain we are also using on top of this because the last node in Wood of Pain has the Death Sentence, which gives you Aether Resistance Reduction, so we're gonna use both of these skills here anyway, so pretty nice. Uh, the belt is a Chains of Igrad belt. You can kind of like use whatever you want here. There are um, at least like one or two other purple ones that you can play for plus one Arcanist. There's also the blue belt that has like plus one Inquisitor and Arcanist, which is pretty nice here as well. Um, there are definitely like other options. This one, however, um, has a of vitality suffix in my case, and I needed the HP, right? I have like kind of low HP. So um, if you get like HP somewhere else, feel free to like use, for example, the blue belt that gives you like plus one to both the masteries. That's pretty nice too. For the Relic, I'm using Eternity. Eternity has Aether damage and Elemental damage, and has a chance to like basically uh, reduce the the cooldown of my skills again, like by another one second, which is very nice for Trolls and, and Stormbox. So yeah, this is a really, really, really good Relic for pretty much anything, especially um, like cooldown cast or Arcanist. 
Um, the, the proc helps out with your defensive skills like Mirror and Nullification, as well as your offensive skills like Chosen Sky Shard and Stormbox in this case. For the pants, I'm using Legends of Arcane Currents. These have Aether damage and Elemental damage, again, like for hybrid playstyle. Bonuses to Stormbox and Mirror, not too bad, and also physical resistance, which is very important to get that like sweet physical resistance up to a at least acceptable level at 35% is, I would say, like very decent in this case, very, very um, decent for a caster like this. And I mean, you playstyle wise, you don't want to like face tank all too much, right? You want to ideally like just put the box down, put the chosen down, and like in between and move. You can also play this build with like a filler ability, like for example. Um, Probably like Seal of Skies would be decent here um, to like spam that in between, but I chose not to because on hardcore I rather want to reposition myself and not get hit by abilities. And honestly, the Stormbox is already like a one second cooldown, so I have to like basically spam this one already very much anyway. So there isn't all too much room in between to even like use a filler, in my opinion. Um, but you can if you want to like play another filler on top. I, at least on hardcore, I wouldn't do it though. I'd rather play a Seal of uh, Corruption here to have like another like dot or like or like another ticking curse rather it's not really like a dot right it's a curse that ticks the aether corruption which has like additional like lightning and aether um damage and also can proc like devotions kind of nicely um the other one i'm using the seed of resonance here which just gives me like the seed resistances and hp which isn't uh too bad either also this one gives you, like, both of these basically give you, like, lightning and aether damage, right? This is aether lightning damage, this is aether elemental damage. So again, catering towards, like, our hybrid playstyle here. For the skill point allocation, let's look at that first, right? So we have one point Iskandra, maxed out overload for, like, offensive ability and aether resistance. And then eight points to elemental balance for the crit damage. Then we have seven points in mirror for the, like, uh, well, defense, right? This is our uh, main, like, panic button or, like, you press this also like before you know that you're gonna have to like tank lots of damage and at seven points you have a very nice sweet spot because like up to like seven points you get a bit more like reduction in the cooldown than you get after seven points so usually you either pick like seven or twelve points here uh, 15 points mavens uh, very nice of course for percent absorption right this is uh, our main or like one of our main defenses one point in conversion only you can put like up to six or nine points depending on like how you feel about your resistances like your cc resistances rather and um yeah i don't need that much here because i already have like a seal of resonance anyway and uh, these look pretty decent so i only put like i think one point here you can see like current level one plus three right so i have like one point uh, actively put in here and then, like three points from gear um but yeah, as i said like up to six points is totally fine and nine points if you really need to see resistances is also not too bad 12 points in a focus you want at least 12 points here, definitely. The last two points are like debatable. Um, the last two points aren't quite as efficient, but if you want to put more than 12 points, you should always make sure to get like to an even amount of points, or like 14, 16 and so on, because then you get like another like percent OA and spirit. Um, Frozen Sky Shard, of course our main ability, so we max this one out. Uh, Frozen Core, only one point, because we do not scale Frostburn damage, and we cannot convert the Frostburn damage to Lightning, or to Aether in this case, so it's just like a one pointer. Uh, Shattered Star, maxed out, well, it's lightning damage and crit damage, needs to be maxed out, like part of the big damage here. Uh, Arcane Well, actually only one point here, and I got 10 points. Um, I don't know why I have like so many points from gear for this, but I mean it's an okay ability. I don't think like, it's that amazing, I don't think you should like max this out really. But it's not too bad actually, it got like buffed a little bit as well. So like whenever you drop like below 75% of your HP, you get like more damage and more defensive ability which is not too bad honestly like it's 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 fine but i think a general rule to this skill is still like if you have like special powers like special skill modifiers rather to the skill then you want to put more points at one but if you don't then usually like you just want to put like one point it's not like it's not bad now really like it's okay but it's as i said like if you don't have like any bonuses to it then it's like not that insane uh, notification i have at seven out of ten points you can see i like actually put four points myself so you have at least four from gear like plus three from gear um <clears throat> i kind of like to have the cooldown on the side a little bit lower but of course you could like pull the points here the three points here and like put them into mirror for example or like put two like pull two points here pull three points here and like put mirror up to 12 points for example that is probably just as good or even better for defense depends like how you wanna like 
play around your defensive skills here. Uh, 10 points mental alacrity. We do actually lack some casting speed. I know like casting speed is not as important on like a cooldown reduction based caster, but our casting speed is really fucking bad, right? Like 157% in this case. Maybe you have more in your build because depending on your FXs, but I only have like 157%. So I do need 10 points here to get like at least uh, somewhat like acceptable levels of casting speed. It's honestly still pretty bad. And maybe should like consider putting a component in my gloves that like give me uh, casting speed, but I do also need resistances, so it's a little bit rough there. Um, Fabric of Reality. And this one gives you like percent damage multiplicative to like Aetherials and Chthonians and so on. And also like percent Aether damage. And you could also like put more points here. However, you don't make use of the flat damage, the flat Aether or Chaos damage. So ultimately, only a one pointer for me in this case. Um, but has potential, maybe. Inquisitor 3, we have one point worth of pain, one point <clears throat> worth of agony. And then a maxed out death sentence. This is basically just like a curse debuff for Aether Resistance Reduction, that's it. We got some like bonuses from gear, but I mean, it's not like a big deal overall. It's just like 1-1, well, 12, one, one, that's all you need. Wood of Renewal, 13, 12, 8. So basically the thought process here is like up to 13 points. You get like a decent amount of like movement speed, DA, and like less damage taken from Chthonians and Eldritch. Uh, 14, like the 14th point is like the first one that's kind of meh. So I stop at 13. Um, Vigor has like mass CC resistance reduction gain after 9 points, however you do get tons of HP and I need HP, so Vigor is maxed out in this case. Sea Resolve, you could probably like pull more points here, um, you can like put up to 8 points to get like resistances for Aether and Chaos, and also like Downshake with Thorns and Elvich. The other stuff you don't really like make use of too much, the percent Aether, uh, metal damage is okay for like lightning damage, right, but it's not like that amazing scaling. So you can basically like put anything between like I think 1 to 10 points here. I went for 8 points. Mm, it kind of like depends on your gear and like how you want to play. Stormbox of Elgoroth. I mean it's the second like main ability of the skill so you want to max it out. And uh, also the Lightning Tether is maxed out in this case. The Lightning Tether actually scales with casting speed and mine isn't that good. So this isn't maybe that good here to max out to be honest. Uh, Lightning Tether could be debatable. I could maybe like try to like pull some points here, put them somewhere else, maybe like to see if that's like making the build overall like more solid. Like maybe, maybe even to get more damage, but probably not. Like you shouldn't get more damage somewhere else than here. Um, but maybe if you want to like pump your defenses more, like mirror or like notification and so on, you could make this build like a bit more like safe, I would say. But Generally speaking, I would still suggest you to like max out both of these skills. And then of course you want to get the Alagas Arcane Net, because I mean already has the name Alagas in it, right, after all. And also, well, the lighting damage of the box itself will be converted to Aether, and you also get 10% total damage modified to this. Um, since you're basically like scaling Aether and Lighting more or less the same way, um, you basically get 10% more damage. And that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Deadly aim, for me, always like only four points, right? Or, or more. Um, like more than four points is usually like kind of bad. Um, but yeah, always four points. And if you get like more points than four from like here, then it's fine. But I mean, yeah, one plus four in this case. And then for the exclusive, actually, I'm playing Auro Sensor here <clears throat> because Auro Sensor has elemental resistance reduction. Uh, I mean, I could play like, what is it? Reckless Power, maybe. But like, Reckless Power has no percent lighting damage. And it has no resistance reduction, so it's just worse. Star Pact converts Aether to Cold, so it's just like a no-go. Conviction. I had physical resistance, but other than that, it's like useless. So the real option here is Aura of Sensor. <coughs> and it's honestly not only because of the elemental resistance reduction, but also it's because of the percent reduced target's damage debuff, right? Because 18% um, damage reduction on the enemy is insane. That is a very good value. And... Uh, the build has no other like damage reduction otherwise except for for notification but notification is like you know only elemental after all so it's not that good um so this is what you want the one debatable thing here is though i'm not playing inquisitor c right and you can play inquisitor c if you want to of course um but i'd rather just prefer to at least on higher like shattered ram shards and so on to rather just like try to dodge the abilities that are scary and like trying to face them in the seal. The seal helps a lot against like weaker abilities or like when enemies like swarm you like in the crucible maybe or like in in lower like 
shards or like in actually also in higher shards but like in the non-boss level shards right the chunks that are not boss levels there this can help as well of course um but i think it's like for this to actually help you would have to like put 12 points in the first point right and then like one in the, in the second one at least it's like 13 points and it's like okay where do you pull 13 points right you can like pull three here like pull maybe like three here pull two here sounds like two five eight you still need like five more points right like where do you pull the points <clears throat> so the builds are like a bit point starved when it comes to that and like here you can like pull one point maybe here and then you would have to like pull points from like other defensive skills probably like you'd either have to like pull from from this right to have like less the aim less healing or like less hp or like less aether and chaos resistance over here or like maybe even like less resistance reduction so there is a trade-off i mean i'm not saying the seed is bad here it is it is definitely like usable and you can feel free to try around with playing the seal but i would actually not necessarily suggest it in this case i mean i'm not playing it myself so i can't really like suggest it uh, anyway devotions are looking like this so we have spirit of the heavens that's one gives you like well lightning and aether damage catering to both the damage types widow well, this is like one of the reasons why hybrid light, lightning aether is possible in the first place because the resistance reduction devotion is already shared for both of these damage types right if this wasn't the case if widow didn't exist if widow for example only had like lightning or only aether resistance reduction and not both then this build probably wouldn't work at all um then we have the scales of karma to <clears throat> give like generic resistance reduction as well i'm playing this over the Rowan's Crown, because Rowan's Crown is only for Elemental, right? Scales of Okama is for Elemental and Aether, in this case. <coughs> Giant's Blood for defense, for, like, healing. Um, this is pretty nice on Arcane Will. Like, then you kind of, like, make sure you only proc it, like, when you're not with HP. And it works like a charm, I think, on Arcanus on Arcane Will. It's, like, really, really good on Arcane Will. Um, and then Turtle, of course, right, for defense. As like a circle breaker and then dry it as like a more consistent healing ability because you have like no healing otherwise on this build right you have only dry it for healing from like chosen sky shard in this case right you want to really like make sure to put this on chosen sky shard because it's gonna like rock like a charm and then you have like healing from giant's blood and you have the healing from your word of renewal from the inquisitor and that's kind of it right there's no other like real healing here in this build so you have to like make sure you get like good healing from devotions too um, and then the rest is kind of like filler, like to get like affinity, right? Some casting speed, physical resistance on Jackal, offensive ability on Viper, physical resistance on Sator's Guide, just like affinity on Eel, and then physical resistance and healing effectiveness on Lotus. The healing effectiveness increases the healing you get from Dryad, increases the healing from the initial heal from Giant's Blood, but not from the regeneration, and it does increase the healing you get from the Word of Renewal as well from the... Um, like the Inquisitor Tree, right? Also, tip the scales has vitality damage and has healing, and this is also getting increased by Lotus. We don't really like scaling vitality damage, but we are converting some of the vitality damage to Aether damage at least with this belt, right? If you have like, you can get like up to 60% conversion on this belt. So this belt like helps a little bit with the sustain as well. Um, that's actually like one of the reasons why this belt is all not too bad compared to like the blue one or the legendary ones. Um, but yeah, this is basically the build and <clears throat> it has been able to clear SR80, Mogdrogon, Lokar, Burm clones of course, like all the like dungeons and with like proper kiting I'm pretty sure you can also defeat like Ravager, Karagadra and the creative entertainment boss um, so this build should be viable for like all content including like Gladiator Crucible 170 as well but not all content is going to be like super easy of course right like the content is still hard and this build i would say it's a very very strong build it's maybe like an a a tier build a plus tier build it's really gotten a lot stronger in this patch than it was like a couple of patches before this one because both the set as well as stormbox got buffed quite significantly on this patch but i would not quite put it in like s tier definitely not like there are builds that are more brain dead to play and stronger sustain and damage wise in this build but this build is a very very solid build and in my opinion, like one of the strongest hybrid builds you can play in this game, if not the strongest, actually. But yeah, hope you enjoy the gameplay after this, and I'll see you around on the next one. Thanks for watching. How far shall we go? Hmm?
Well done.
done. I'm gonna need pots for this fight. I still have like actually the drain groove on running. Yeah, this, this fight like really needs something now I feel like compared to the other super boss fights that have like Sunderland. This one has nothing. So it's kinda I don't know. Coin to easy. Oh shit, I didn't like um Readjust my ordnance actually. Fuck. I have like terrible aether rests, right? And chaos rests, actually. So I might die here. Yeah. Yeah, that's the joke, right? Like, look at the fucking damage from Trozen. Like, one Trozen, it just like drops down. Right. Some bubble. He's stalling. Stop stalling. Okay, no, it's not, no bubble. Like, look at the damage here. Like, he just dies. A stormbox build kill crate. Probably. Okay, let's go low card without pots as well. Let's go. He has a hammer though. Hammer can be kind of scary. And you do wanna like dodge these projectiles, right? Should probably face a bit more actually. Probably like cut down the kill time. If I'm not playing the scared, we're gonna try to take on Morg Drogon here, right? So we're gonna like juice up, get all the juice. And of course, also we have used some, like we have switched some augments to have like 64 code and 61 lightning over cap. And now we're gonna use these pots on top, which puts us as like at, at like 90% over cap, which should be definitely enough. Now the only thing I have to like worry about here should be <clears throat> either my sustain not being strong enough or of course like me standing inside the cloud and like you know getting sundered. Other than that, also I would actually suggest you to probably spam uh, the notification on him here because the sunder doesn't really last all too long on this guy anyway. Well, it's probably better to just like it by him for like damage reduction and to remove the thunder on yourself. Because ideally you couldn't get hit in the first place and even if you do get hit, like it doesn't last for all too long as long as you move out of the cloud. Right, whenever he like glows orange basically just move and like wait away like here right oh my god i got stuck on the tree <laughs>
Okay, and then like once he's 50% HP, right? He's gonna deal more damage. So now you really don't want to get hit by the Sunder anymore. Whenever he goes close, you can use the Ravager active. Otherwise, don't bother. Like, don't go close to him to like activate it. But like, whenever he is close to you, he comes close close to you, right? Or whenever you like dodge a Sunder Cloud and you dodge into him, then sure, like use it on it. Otherwise, don't bother. I mean, yeah, that's basically the point, right? That is basically the point. Whenever he blows orange, just move. And as long as you have enough sustain, enough damage, enough like base tankiness, enough like overcap or lightning. And I feel like this you really have like all the range in the world almost, so... It's so easy to like not stand inside the cloud. Also, another thing you might want to know is, like, can I jump into another cloud when he does the cloud attack? Not really, because whenever he does the cloud attack, the other cloud would always already be faded away, right? Because his cooldown is, like, either the same or, like, longer than the duration of the cloud. So, yeah, he's dead, I guess. A massive burden and honor has been placed upon you, outsider. Who shall serve as the Ravager's flesh? He is brash and prone to anger, but those emotions can- Who shall serve? Ever devoted, Jordith is rap- Oh, it's me. 
Thank you so much for watching. Remember to check out and expand the description below for Grim Trolls links and related playlists. Shout out to all of my supporters on Patreon, YouTube and Twitch. Without you guys, this channel wouldn't even exist. If you are new to this channel and you like my content, feel free to like, subscribe and head over to my Patreon to support me. All of your support will be used to create more Grim Dawn guides on YouTube like this, as well as additional Grim Dawn content for the upcoming community seasons. If you haven't heard of or played a community season yet, you can do so at any point, even when it's offline, via the website grimdawnleak.com. I hope you enjoy the content, and I'll see you around on the next one.